Hello there, UE4 Mentor here. I've prepared a series of tutorials with four parts for the UE4 sequencer. When you follow the tutorial, you will become a hero in making awesome cutscenes like this one. The UE4 sequencer is similar to other video editing or audio editing software where you have different layer tracks and you animate those layer tracks, in our case the Unreal Engine 4 actors with keyframes. The first thing we want to do is to add a level sequence. So go to cinematics at the top and click on add level sequence. You also have the master sequence where you can combine different other level sequences to create a more complex uh, cutscene or a movie for example. But we will use the level sequence so click on add level sequence. Then you can define where your sequence will be saved. For us this will be the cinematic tutorial and I will give it a name Let's say shootout and save and then our level sequence is created and the sequencer will come up and what we will do today is to create a cutscene with two soldiers. One is standing here and the other one will leave his cover running to the left, goes into cover, then some shots got fired from this guy here and the other soldier leaves cover again, then gets a shot in his right shoulder, falls on the ground and leaves a blood puddle starting on his shoulder. And at the end we will render a movie out of the whole cutscene. At this point it's very important to have a script ready or some kind of scribbles of your scene that you exactly know what you do because it's really hard to improvise a cutscene out of nothing basically. But our scene is prepared already and we know that we need two soldiers. This guy here will have a gun as well as the enemy soldier here. And this dude here doesn't do anything except walking over and going into cover. And the player soldier will do some actions like firing the rifle and having an idle animation for aiming at the other player. We also need a particle effect for the gunfire, a sound for the gunfire, also some other particle effects here for the wood. And what we also will do is to create an impact on this can and finalize the whole cutscene with some blood particles and the blood puddle. First things first, I will explain some of the sequencer elements here. So we have our timeline here. We have the time range at the bottom where we can set the end of the timeline. Let's set it to 10 seconds. We can set the end time of the whole sequence, which is the red slider here. You can drag it wherever you like. And we have some other buttons in the top bar, like saving the whole sequence. When you click on this icon, it switches to the content browser and shows the sequence you have added. Then we also have the button to create a camera from the current viewport here. We also have a button to render the whole scene. We will use this at the end. We have various actions we can do. I won't go in too much detail here. We also have some different view settings here and some playback options where you can set the start time of the scene, the end time, and you can also set up the playback speed. Then we have some keyframe options. We will come to this later. And then we have an automatic keyframe button which should be turned on per default because you want to create keyframes as soon as you move actors around in your scene. Let's say we want to move an object from point A to point B in the timeline and the location for point A is already set via a keyframe at 0 seconds. Then you go to the 3 seconds mark in your timeline and move the object to point B. Then the sequencer will automatically set the keyframe for the values which have been changed. For location this would be the X, Y and Z coordinates. But don't worry, we will come to this later when we are creating our cutscene. Then the next option is the allow all edits setting. This should be always enabled. I usually don't use the other settings here. 
Then we also have the enable and disable snapping option. This means when you change a keyframe and you move it around on your timeline, this actually snaps to other keyframes at the same time. This helps creating a good looking scene when you align the keyframe you're currently working with uh, with other keyframes. Then we have the setting of FPS. I usually work in 60 FPS here, so I choose 60 FPS. And I also change the show time as setting from frames always to seconds. This changes the shown time at the top here. Usually those are frames, but now when you change it, you have seconds, which makes it a bit easier to work with. So I always use seconds. And then we also have this uh, animation key curve editor here. I will quickly open it up and show it to you. With the curve editor, you can edit the curve for each keyframe. When you change the location of an actor, for example, you will see in this view three curves, one for the X coordinates, one for the Y coordinates, and one for the Z coordinates. And by changing the curve for each of those keyframes, you can tweak the sequence animation for the actor perfectly for your needs. Um, we will have a look at this later as well. So close it and come back to your sequencer. And then we will start laying out our scene. So first of all, we need the two soldiers. One standing here with this rifle and the other one is hidden behind the wall there. So the first thing we want to do is to move the soldier from our content browser into the scene. And all the assets I'm using here for this tutorial are based on the animation starter kit from Epic Games from the marketplace. And I also have a lot of other assets ready like you see in the scene already. Uh, those come from Quixel Bridge and I also use some audio and uh, meshes and particle effects uh, from myself. But you can follow this tutorial by using your own assets or just uh, using a placeholder for now. This will work as well. But back to our content browser here, um, I will add the animation here. It's a mannequin animations. Then in animation starter pack, I will use the idle rifle iron sights. Move it into our scene, align it a bit, rotate it in the right direction. And we already have our first soldier here. So the first thing you want to do when you work with the sequencer is to lay out your scene correctly and then starting animating each and every part of it. Because it's way easier having all your objects already in the scene compared to spawning them with the sequencer. I will also show this later, but uh, with all the objects ready, you know what you need to animate and trigger and all that stuff. It gets a bit harder when you spawn the assets directly with the sequencer, so I used to work like this. But if you want to spawn actors while your sequence is playing, you can do this as well. But I think it's a bit easier working with all the objects which are in your scene. Next thing we want to do is to add a gun to the animation here. Therefore. I will open up my cinematic tutorial, open up the meshes and there we have an assault rifle. I will rotate it and attach it to the hand. On the right hand and then I will align the gun to fit perfectly to the animation pose here. Because once you attach the gun to the bone, it will follow all the bone animations, which makes it quite easy for us, because we don't need to animate the weapon itself. I mean, you can do that, for example, like uh, when the bullet ejects here, you can also add animations to the weapon, but the movement of the weapon itself is attached to the bone and the bone is already animated with our rifle animation. So let's finish up the alignment in the hand. I think this is a good result for now. The next thing we want to do is 
to add our particle effect at the barrel here. So a particle effect for the muscle flash. Just drag and drop your muscle flash particle effect into your scene. And align it properly to your um, gun mesh. I think this looks good. And just a quick tip from me, when you have an actor selected and you hit F on your keyboard, you focus this actor and you can rotate perfectly around. That's what I do all the time in the editor when I want to align an object perfectly to another object. This helps a bit and makes it easier to align all the actors properly. Now we will also add an audio effect when the gun is firing. I've already prepared the gunfire cue here. Just drag and drop that in. And also align it with the barrel. Yeah, this looks good. And then don't forget to attach both of the actors. And this time we will attach them to the gun. And when you hit none, when you attach an actor, it attaches to the root bone, which is totally fine in our case. Let's have a look if the particle here fits our size. We'll go to details and click on reset to trigger the particle effect. I think it's a bit too big. I will reduce the size here. This is a bit too big. I think 0.5 is a bit better. Maybe we can adjust it later. Yeah, no, this is, this is cool. All right, then we will add our enemy here behind this wall. Also from the animation starter pack, I will choose the Chock RT rifle and move him here. And also attach the rifle like we already did for the other soldier. All right, looks good. Now we will add our impact points. So choose some impact points in your scene and put the particles there. For me, I have prepared some wood particles. Let's put it here. And let's say one here. We will trigger those particles when the enemy soldier is in cover here and then our other guy shoots at this obstacle and then we will trigger some particles to show the impact point of the bullets. All right, let's see how it looks when we manually trigger it. A bit too big, so I also changed this to 0.5 and the other one as well. Yeah, looks good. Okay, and then we have our cans here. And what I prepared in our scene script is that a bullet will hit this can here, then fly away and right after that, the enemy soldier will leave his cover here and gets a shot in the right shoulder because we want the engine to calculate everything related to physics. So the next thing I want to do is to change this to a physics object. We'll click on the can, check the simulate physics button, also set up a mass, I think 100 is fine. And I also want the other can here affected by the impulse. So change it to simulate physics as well. And here I will use 500 as mass because I don't want to move this object that much. Therefore, when you have a bigger mass, 
the physics impact will be less. Then we also have to add our impulse here. Uh, our force, radial force actor, this is the one we need. So just search for force or radial force and drag and drop it in your scene. Move it at the point where the impact should happen and also adjust the radius because I just want those two objects to be affected by the impulse. Or maybe 50. Yeah, this looks good. I also want to affect only the physics body, so I remove the pawn, the vehicle and the destructible. It always depends on your scene, you can also leave those object types here if you want to affect them, but it's totally up to you. For the radial force actor, we need an, a pretty high impulse strength here. A good starting point for this is about, I think, 600,000. Then we just need to add our impact. I have a particle effect ready just for the cans. I will move it where the impact point is. Also adjust the scale again. Let's check if it fits. Yeah, I think we need to rotate it a bit. This should be the right impact point. Let's test it out. Yeah, this looks good. And then double check if your radial force actor is at the correct position near the impact point. I think this is fine. You can move it a bit down to give the can a bit of an impulse to go up and not just back. It will look a bit better because our camera will be around here. And if the can just flies back, you won't see that much from the physics calculation. So we give it a bit of a up force to see a bit more of this impact. And then our basic scene is ready to be animated with the sequencer. And this is it for part one of our tutorial series. Thanks a lot for tuning in again. Don't forget to leave a like and a subscription and hope to see you in the next video. Have a nice day guys. Bye bye.